that causes a problem. The other way foreign exchange comes in is diaspora remittances. And we've been talking about a lot. Oh, that's where they remitted this, they remitted this. But that, again, is a non-stickly kind of uh, uh, um, um, foreign exchange supply. If I'm sending money to Nigeria for my grandmother, she dies. Then I don't send the money again now. If I'm sending the money for my brother because he's building a house for me, when he completes the house, and then I withdraw the money again now. So it depends on the needs of the family back home. The most important way, the best way is to ramp up exports. Also, let's ramp up exports. According to the NEPC Executive Director and CEO, Olu Shegun, uh, Shegun Awolawa. But again, if you're doing that, you need domestic production. Latest data shows Nigeria's manufacturing index, what you call the PMI, uh, has been sluggish. On both scores, we have from FBN Quest and from the Central Bank, we have numbers still around below 50, which shows we're still negative. Let's get more sense from the consumer goods sector and the numbers we've seen in recent weeks. Usman Ulubajo is an investment analyst from AIM Securities. Good morning, Usman. Good morning. Thank you very much. We've seen some of these numbers. They should look really sweet, but some are not really sweet. Now, the key question here is what does these numbers reveal about the challenges the um, consumer good companies uh, who sell some locally and perhaps do some exports to West Africa uh, as uh, uh, region, uh, what they face? So the manufacturing PMI numbers are actually show that um, consumer goods companies uh, this service and the broader manufacturing companies are, are actually struggling. Uh, since January 2016, both the manufacturing and the services PMI has been a contractionary trend, though numbers in October at 44 is just a slower um, contraction, but it's still a contraction. And the problem still continues to remain the same. Uh, first and foremost, uh, dollar scarcity affects challenges. Uh, we also have subject consumer income. So rising inflation is also weighing on that. And then also we also have elevated input costs uh, for, the, for the companies within the sector. So on in all, the sector is actually uh, experiencing a very bad moment presently. If you look at local investors, retail investors, that is, whether they are pensioners or whatever, you look at the annual general meetings of the consumer good companies, it's always filled up because these are food products they consume on a daily basis. So they buy the shares. They, they feel this affinity with the consumer goods, whether it's Nestle, Cadbury, 7-Up, what have you. And, but now it looks like things are a little bit changing. So what investment of investing strategies do you think? Do you think things are a little bit not okay? Should they drop those shares? Should they hold on to it? Do you see as an analyst a long value and say, look, this FX problems, ban on items, con uh, recession, will taper off over time and those stocks are still really good from a capital appreciation point of view and a dividend uh, a yield point of view? Uh, for the sector as a whole, um, the underlying challenges which will continue to impact earnings, at least in the near term, uh, a number of them are foreign debts, and this, um, the effects, the depreciation of the Naira has significantly, as a result of depreciation of the Naira, a number of companies have imposed significant FX losses. Uh, also, most of them are import dependent, so the, the feature of Naira weakness uh, continues to impact input costs. Then also monetary policy, I mean, the sustained and hawkish, hawkish policy. So overall, any outlook for the consumer goods sector as a whole uh, is actually not, not looking so good. Although there are some companies that are, are benefiting from this uh, environment, like the palm oil producers, for example, Okuma and Presco, uh, given the uh, ban on 41 items, including CPU imports. So the imports, uh, CPU imports consist about 35% of domestic total supply. So as a result, we've seen domestic CPU prices actually climb significantly higher. I've also seen uh, the, I mean, increased demand for domestic products. So we've seen that on their earnings. Uh, we've seen that in terms of even their year-to-day performance, they've actually done um, pretty well. Another company that's, well, relatively done better, I mean, has a good outlook is Dangote Sugar. Um, Dangote Sugar 
because of the nature of sugar, uh, they've been able to, like in Q3, in Q3, for example, they've raised prices in a bit to uh, offset some of the input cost pressures, significantly about 21%. And though while volumes um, came down, volumes are still growing about 6% uh, for Q3 in particular. Also, they don't have, um, they don't have foreign debts. They don't even have debt on their books, so the impact of monetary tightening is actually supporting their interest in I'm looking at Dangote Sugar, that's significantly positive, 58% year on year, uh, nine months uh, growth for, for, for this year, and, and some estimates are looking at um, 102 billion naira full year. So, 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 so for the company, it's, it's their revenue, yeah, for, for the quarter in particular, they, they actually, um, it was... Revenue grew more than double uh, for the period. Price hikes and, uh, like I said, volumes though slowed was still was still up. So and they don't have they don't have FX um, FX they don't Not have foreign yeah yeah. yeah. So, so in, in terms of how consumers are considering this, uh, so investors, do you think retail investors should still do they overall? If you look at the entire consumer goods basket or as a portfolio, do you think they can hold on, or do you just do different stock uh, selection? Yeah, the sector as a whole is bad, so they shouldn't buy the buy the sector as a whole. So perhaps if they want to buy, they should just consider some of all these considerations. Uh, which of these companies are able to pass through the, the input cost prices to consumers? Which of them don't have foreign debts on their books, and which of them are likely going to pay sizable dividend? Uh, and for, for, for Nigerians who have been squeezed as far as earnings is concerned, disposable income is concerned, over time do you see these consumer goods companies surviving on a long-term basis? Do you think somewhere down the line? Yeah, on a long-term basis, yeah, yes, most of them. So the thing is, uh, for consumers, once they have money, most likely what they are going to purchases are uh, energy as well as food and this uh, the food segment is where the consumer goods play so even whilst a number of these companies have actually raised prices you've seen most of them actually grow revenue so the pr problem is uh, as the revenue been able to um, as a reason up to a level whereby it's more than offsets uh, the input cost pressure so but after this 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 is just a is just a phase and after after this period we should expect um, positive, positive earnings outlook. Whatever we do, we can't do without those basic things of life, can we? No, we can't. No, we can't. <laughs> no, we just we got how to have tea, coffee, pastries, bread, whatever. So we need all the inputs, and these companies will continue to be uh, in, in business. Thank you for uh, putting some, bringing some insight into this for us. Thank you. Uh, Usman Ulubajo, who is an investment analyst at AIM Securities. Okay, before we take a break, we will come back and look at the numbers for the markets flip-flopping a bit of equities. Some earnings are sweet, others are not so sweet. Ruti Mifakaijo is bringing up the final lap of the programming via telephone to discuss today's trading day as we get open. <laughs>